Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Friday's edition of Take 5. Can you believe another week has come and gone? Man, I can't believe how fast time is flying, but it it is. So hey, let's make the best of it and let's serve God with every moment that we have left. So you know what we're talking about. For two weeks, we've been dealing with the subject, the Lord, my healer, uh, and we've been trying to get some biblical truth, some biblical balance to understanding the subject of divine healing uh, as it pertains to sickness uh, that we have to deal with here in this life. We've answered a lot of questions this week. I've got one more thing that I want to deal with. These six things that we've talked about this week are designed to bring uh, balance to our understanding of the subject of sickness and healing. Uh, they're designed to clear up misconceptions and correct bad theology and to bring peace to our heart and mind concerning the things that we don't understand. Now, that last one, to bring peace, that's actually the last point that we're going to talk about uh, this week. And I want to put this in the form of a question. And I really want us to think about this because this kind of determines really whether we trust God with this subject of healing uh, or not. Here it is. What's more important? supernatural peace or supernatural healing? What's more important to you? That you have supernatural peace about this situation or that you have the supernatural healing the way you think you ought to have it? Uh, and I, I, I'll be quite honest with you. I've been on that side where, where I just thought and demanded that God had to do certain things a certain way. And when it doesn't happen that way, there is no peace in that. You, you'll have no peace in your heart. You'll have no peace in your mind uh, because you did not trust God with it for him to do things his way. Philippians chapter 4, we've read this for the past five, six, seven years. I don't know how long we've been doing our prayer meetings, but we read it uh, that week. We read it all week long. Here's what it says. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Tell God what's wrong. Tell God what you need. Tell God what you are desiring. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Did you, did you notice that? We're to tell him specifically what's wrong, what we are desiring. We're to mix that with thanksgiving and with faith. And he said, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. Notice it did not say that if we make these things known to God, that before we say amen, then he will send the answer. As a matter of fact, the answer is not even addressed. Now, did, did you take note? The answer is not even addressed. What he says is, is that he will give us peace that superintends our natural understanding, that, that takes our understanding and brings it under control and, and, and causes us to have peace where ordinarily our understanding would cause us to have anxiety and fear and anger and all of these other things. And that's his promise that he would give us peace. And so I, I submit to you that supernatural peace is way more important than supernatural healing because we don't understand everything there is to know about supernatural healing. We don't understand the balance and we don't understand exactly what God's doing because we don't see the big picture. And hey, let's not forget, his ways are not our ways. His ways are much, much, much higher than ours. That last verse, verse 8 says, finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's just, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's commendable, if there's any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. So basically what this passage is telling us to do is that if we're sick, if that's our need, then we bring it to God and we lay it out before him and we tell him our need and we tell him what we desire. We do this according to the scripture. We mix it with faith and we mix it with thanksgiving. And then he has promised to give us peace and that peace will be with us until the answer comes as long as we align ourselves with the scripture. And then once we have that promise of peace that comes to our heart and mind, the next verse tells us if there's anything worthy of praise, give God the glory. So what ultimately we're supposed to do 
is bring our needs before God, ask the Lord to heal us, ask the Lord to deliver us, then rest in that supernatural peace and praise God for what he is going to do. Praise God for what he has done because let's face it, it could always be worse than, than what it is right now. Give God the praise in this situation in spite of the sickness and whether or not the healing comes the way you want it to, give God the praise because he's worthy of it whether we get healed or not. So the, the supernatural peace is the most important thing because we don't always understand what the will of the Lord is. So in conclusion, let me say this. It really doesn't matter how much faith a person may have or what kind of spiritual closeness they think they have with God. This physical body, this house, this tent that we live in is going to get older and, and it's going to wear out with age because it is mortal and it's going to have difficulties the older we get and no amount of faith in the world is going to change that. This body has to go back to the dust from whence it came. It has to, and no amount of faith is going to change that. It, it has to happen. So that tells us that even though faith is definitely required on the part of the believer, you know, as it results to healing, we must not claim more than the Lord has promised in the scales and balances of his word. So we cannot run around and claim and say that Every Christian ought to be healthy and whole and never be sick. Friend, you've got to die some way. I know this sounds like Debbie Downer to some folks out there in that super faith realm, uh, you know, that's not really faith at all, uh, but you've got to die some way and we can't lay claim to more than God has promised in his word. We're encouraged as believers to believe and pray for healing. And that is the only instruction that the Bible gives us on this subject. Sometimes if healing is not forthcoming and there's no satisfactory explanation, the idea is for the believer to continue to trust the Lord and continue in prayer despite the problems and the difficulties and the process that we go through when we're dealing with sickness. You cannot take faith and force God into action. It just doesn't happen. He's God. He can do whatever he chooses. And let me go ahead and tell you this. He doesn't need you reminding him what his word says. We went through that in the church. God, you know your word says. And God, because your word says, God, you've got to do. Well, let me just tell you what I know. He's God. He is all powerful. He is almighty. He is the most high. He is sovereign and he ain't got to do nothing. And I know that ain't good English, but he ain't got to do nothing. He's God. He can do whatever he wants to. That's not faith when we do that. That is spiritual and religious manipulation. And, and people that are unlearned in the scriptures will pull verses and bits and pieces of verses from here and there to try to leverage God because they're seeking to engineer the scriptures for their own comfort, not considering the fact that God may not be interested in our comfort as much as he is the process of what he's doing in our life and in the lives of others through this sickness. So if we're going to truly trust the Lord for this subject of divine healing, then we're going to have to trust him and we're going to have to hold fast to that supernatural peace that he gives us in spite of what's going on in our life. Hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you. I look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday and then being right back here in front of the camera on Monday as we start a brand new series of Take 5 Devotions. Till then, have a great weekend. And remember this, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.